might notice we have Sheila here, but we don't have Tim Holden. And so I wanted to make a couple of remarks before we get started to explain what's going on. Um, and while she was refreshing herself, I thought it was a good time so we don't want to eat up too much of her time. Uh, what happened was I had contacted, actually Holden's campaign first to try to arrange this debate that we are co-hosting, this is the Coast Town Democratic Club, co-hosting with the Coast Town University College Democrats. That's a fledgling group. They've been doing an amazing job in the few months that they've been together. And so we've been taking these debates very, very seriously and the other events that they've been sponsoring. They're amazing guys. So, in fact, uh, Michael will be talking to you a little bit about that in a minute. But, um, in, uh, so I contacted them. I explained all of this. I explained the constraints of hitting up against the end of the semester and finals. And I had said, <coughs> we really need to schedule something in this window of time. They had said they didn't want to schedule anything because Sheila was undergoing a petition challenge by Holman's campaign at the time. They were hoping to win that challenge, they didn't, but they were hoping to win, so they were saying they were not going to be scheduling anything until that challenge was over. And so I said, well, would you consider, given the, given the circumstances of my timing, they said no. So, well, they didn't ever say anything, actually. So I kept uh, coming up with dates and suggesting things. I finally found a good date that was good for everyone else. <laughs> I scheduled the debate and I invited them. Now, that sounds strange, but I can't tell you how many times I have discovered in my tenure as president of the Kutztown Area Democratic Club that you actually have to do that sometimes to get somebody to show up. You don't necessarily hear whether they're going to be there as recent, as close to the event as that day. And so when I wasn't hearing anything, that's sort of a presumed yes, frankly. And what's always happened in the past is that the person actually shows up or they contact me and make different arrangements. Neither of those things happened. So on Thursday evening, I got an email from Holden's campaign saying that they would not be attending and that they had left me a phone message two weeks earlier, which they had not done. Um, I told them that even if they believe that they left me a message two weeks earlier, there had been ample opportunities when I was emailing them to say that I had confirmed a moderator, I had gotten a room assignment. It was obvious, in other words, that all these groups were working very hard to put this event together and they could have notified us at any time, and they did not. So, I told them at that point, there will be two chairs, and there will be a chair with his name in front of it, he's welcome to be in it or not, and the debate was going to go forward. So, what I was told by Tim Smith, who was the person that I was dealing with, his legislative aide, not his campaign anymore, I was told that that's fine, but I should tell the group that Tim Holden is in Washington doing the job that we sent him there to do, and that's why he can't attend to me. So I thought I'd look up the legislative calendar to see what's going on, and so I'm going to read to you now the things that Tim Holden needed to be in Washington, D.C. today to do. The first 10 bills that they're considering between now and the end of the week, mind you, are suspensions. If you don't know what suspensions are, it means suspension of the rules. And what that means is that when there are bills out there that are so non-controversial that they're likely to pass without any sort of controversy, they suspend the rules. They just vote for them kind of straight up and down. And so the 10 bills that he had to consider are Caregivers and Veterans Omnibus Health Services Act, expressing support for designation of May 1st as Silver Star Service Banner Day, expressing condolences to the families, friends, and loved ones of the victims of the fire at the Tesoro Refinery in Anacortes, Washington, commemorating the 40th anniversary of Earth Day and honoring the founder of Earth Day, the late Senator Gaylord Nelson of Wisconsin, uh, congratulating Radford University on the 100th anniversary of the university, uh, commending the University of Connecticut Huskies for their historic win in the 2010 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Tournament, the Fit Kids Act, expressing support for Mathematics Awareness Month, <laughs> recognizing the continued importance of volunteerism and national service, and commemorating the anniversary of the signing of the landmark legislation, the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act. And finally, congratulating Reverend Daniel P. Coughlin on his 10th year of service as chaplain of the House of Representatives. There are a couple other things that are going to be considered. The next one is a motion to go to conference. That's a procedural vote. That's done by unanimous consent, which means that they go to the floor, they say they read the motion, everybody says yes, if somebody says no, that's the only reason why they need to show up, if they're planning on saying no. So that was uh, having to do with something going to conference. If you don't know what that means, it means that, that we go to Senate, there would be a conference committee to try to work out a compromise bill that both houses can live with. And then finally, there was a District of Columbia House uh, Voting Rights Act. Now, that sounds pretty important, except that it was pulled from the legislative agenda for 2010 yesterday. And that was kind of telegraphed for some time now because of a very unfortunate gun control bill that was attached to it. So that's why your congressman and ours, Tim Holden, couldn't be here tonight. Um, 
Are there any questions? <laughs> I just wanted to sh leave one more bit of information with you before I turn it over to the actual debate then. Um, I checked out Tim Holden's voting record. I thought, well, maybe it's not you know that important who these votes. You know, maybe it's just that he's got some kind of record he's maintaining. So I looked at it, and actually in 2010 for the first quarter, there were 154 votes, 13 he didn't vote on, which constitutes 8.4% of the votes were no votes for him. He wasn't there. And so, you know, it's not like he's running some kind of perfect record. Chuck? I don't know if this is a question or not, but just a comment. It's my feeling that if uh, we were some kind of big campaign contributor or some kind of mover or shaker in the district, and we wanted to see Tim Holden here tonight, he would be here for them. But he's not here to talk to regular citizens. Amen. Thanks for that comment. Anybody else want to say something very quick? Because I don't want to take up Sheila's time. David? Have they had any debates yet, or do they have any plans to have any debates at all? Well, that was an interesting little bit of information. I actually called them during, I called them weeks and weeks ago at the very, during the petition signing period. As soon as uh, I finally reached them, it was when the challenge had already been put forward. And at that time, when I made my first contact prior to that, I was aware of the May 3rd debate that's going to be taking place in Pottsville, Schoolville County. Um, it's a very small venue from everything I'm told, and the tickets are already gone for that event now. So even if people here wanted to actually go and attend that one to see their congressperson, they really wouldn't be able to. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, that was at the time when I was told that they were no longer scheduling anything until the petition signing period had ended. And I found out from Tim Smith that there have been other events that they've accepted invitations to that they had to have accepted during that period of time. Make up that what you will.